This is dicing with death. We want to be safe and in search of safety, the countries of the world in the face of COVID closed down much of the economy. Yet a Lancet study confirmed that global deaths from alcohol are 2.8 million annually, three times the current number of deaths caused by COVID. If we wanted to be safe and save lives, all we'd have to do is stop drinking. Is the reality that we pretend to want to be safe when someone else is responsible, but when we're left to our own devices and desires, we frequently choose risk instead? Or do we want safety, but we just don't realise that routine activities are dangerous? To help us explore some of these themes, we're joined by Srinitra Gupta, Professor of Theoretical Epidemiology at Oxford University, who recently made headlines with her outspoken comments against the widespread acceptance of Imperial College's model of coronavirus deaths. David D. Friedman is one of the, the most renowned anarcho-capitalist theorists in the world. His book, The Machinery of Freedom, defends the idea that we should set capitalism free completely. And Indira Jasing is a human rights lawyer and legal activist. She regularly argues in the Indian Supreme Court, and she's one of the most successful defenders of women's rights and environmental standards in the world. So to begin our debate, our discussion, I'm going to ask each member of our panel to set out their stall. They'll get three minutes to make their pitch in answer to this question. If we care about safety, why do we continually engage in risky behaviour? And I'm going to ask Indira to start us off. You ask, why do we indulge in risky behaviour, although we care about our safety? In my opinion, this question is not about me, whether I indulge in risky behaviour. I think it's a question which is addressed to collective risky behavior as reflected in the civilizational choices we have made as countries, as nations, and globally as the family of nations. It's that behavior which is risky. So my counter question with me would be, do I have a choice about uh, the behavior that I indulge in? Or is my behavior conditioned by the external circumstances, which are a given? which are political choices, which are choices which our leaders make. And uh, um, let me just come directly to the question of COVID-19. We all know that this is, with a caveat, I'm not a scientist, as you rightly point out, as a human rights activist. But I, we all know, we've read enough to know, that COVID-19 is, is a respiratory disease. We get it from the air. Now, I want to ask everyone a question. Do we have any control over the quality of the air we breathe? I, I have none. I can't go around my day-to-day -day life wearing a mask or using oxygen. I want to lead a free life. I want to re lead a life where I'm sure that the air which I breathe is as clean as it possibly could be. Now, the path of development that we have chosen the world over does not permit this to happen. And therefore, I would contest your proposition that I indulge in risky behavior. I care about my safety, but as a civilization, we don't care about other people's safety. Safety is indivisible, isn't it? I can't remain safe while you are not safe. And so uh, how do we make sure that the world we live in is safe? Uh, in today's world, we all know uh, that uh, what global warming has done and what it means. We don't seem to think intergenerationally. We, think to, we seem to think only for today. We don't seem to understand the damage that we have caused uh, to generations who are going to come after us. That's one of our problems when we talk about a risky behavior. And uh, you see, uh, we need to question whether wearing masks, social distancing, and sanitization are the answers uh, to, the, to the imminent risk of death that we face. 
in my opinion, they are not. In my opinion, uh, we need to know. We need to decide whether the so-called normal is not the is not the circumstance which brought us to this sorry pass. And whether we want to question that normal, not a return uh, to that normal, uh, because the return to that normal will bring us back. Uh, today we have SARS, we have COVID-2. Who knows when we'll have COVID-3? Who knows when we'll have COVID-4? To the best of my knowledge, and we have an epidemiologist with us to guide us through this discussion, I, I know that scientists over the world had warned us of, of possible pandemics. And I'm not talking about science fiction. I'm talking about hard data. We know that these virus cross uh, species uh, we know that they, they they can they can jump from say bats or monkeys to human beings now the question is did we ever think how we could address these issues we never did and a part of hey, the hey, I'm, I'm just going to stop you there Indira. you got us off to a fantastic start thank you but you have okay. had your three minutes so I'm going to move now to David I'm going to ask you the same question if we care about safety, why do we continually engage in risky behavior? Because we care about a lot of other things as well. You put the alternatives incorrectly. Everybody takes risks, including Indira. I expect there are occasions when she drives in a car and doesn't have to. And when you drive in a car, especially in some uh, cities she may have been in, there is a risk that somebody will run into you. Uh, she presumably goes outside where she could be hit by lightning when she doesn't have to. That in the real world, we do not have the alternative of living a life with zero risk. That isn't an alternative. It never has been. We happen to live in about the safest world that has ever existed so far because of the benefits of modern medicine and high real incomes by historical standards and all the rest of it. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we have trade-offs. And we, have, we always have trade-offs in everything. It's all very well to say your life is infinitely valuable, but nobody acts that way. Nobody is willing to give up everything else he cares about in order to live a day longer. That's not how people behave. It's not how rational people should behave. Uh, so I think the real question is always one of trade-offs. It's always how much that would it cost? How much would you have to give up? in order to reduce the risk by some amount, is it worth doing? Uh, and if I imagine the consequences of a lockdown, I imagine somebody who spent 10 years creating a small business, a, a local restaurant, that's where his heart is, that's what he's given his life to. If you could tell him, you can save your restaurant at the cost of 1% chance of dying, I think most people would take that risk. 50% they probably wouldn't, 100% they should, surely wouldn't. So it seems to me that in the real world, there are always trade-offs and we are always willing to accept some increase in risk in order to avoid giving up other things that are really important to us. And, you know, the very extreme case is the person who's willing to give up his life for something he really cares about. And he's willing to do that because what he wants to get doesn't depend on his being alive. The reason we think of life as infinitely valuable is because most of us would say, we would, I wouldn't sell my heart deliverable today for any price at all. But the reason is not that your life is infinitely valuable, it's that dollars are worthless to a corpse. So the payment would be, would be worthless. But as I say, there are people who are willing to sell their lives, uh, martyrs of one sort or another, a World War I soldier charging into machine gun fire, you can make up your, you know, imagine whichever story you like, but there certainly have been such people in the past. And that's because they are seeking something that doesn't require them to be alive to collect. For most of us, that's not the case. And so most of us are not willing to sell our heart for immediate delivery, whatever the price we're offered. So anyway, I think that the basic answer is that it is perfectly entirely rational. People, of course, make mistakes, but it is rational to accept some risks when the cost of preventing them is too high. Thank you very much, David. Um, so, Srinitra, if we care about safety, why do we, why do we continually engage in risky behaviour? Well, first of all, let me apologise for underestimating the risk that my landline, which never rings, would ring at this point. Um, okay, so, I mean, some of what I'm going to say, obviously, will reiterate what's just been said. 
So, but perhaps the, the slight difference in focus might be that I'd, I'd like to um, draw attention, not just to risk and... To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.